My name is Howard Capone. Uh, I attended the MPH at GW, which is the online school through the Milken Institute School of Public Health at George Washington University. Can you tell us a little bit about your research? So I studied, uh, I did an analysis of policy barriers to EMS involvement in hospice. I did that because right now hospice is in crisis in the United States, and in 20 years it's going to be much worse. The baby boomers are aging into the elderly population. We're living a longer time with uh, increasingly managed chronic health conditions, and what that means is we're dying slower deaths than we ever have before, and that means hospice services are under huge demand. Last year, 1.2 million people were hospice patients, and those were only the patients that utilized the Medicare hospice benefit, which means that number is really underreported from, from the actual number of people that needed hospice. The reason EMS is such an interesting partnership concept with hospice is because when EMS is called to a home, traditionally our model has been to take them out of the home to the hospital, whereas that's in direct conflict with the hospice mission of keeping patients in their home if they want to be there. that prevents paramedics from entering the home, doing an assessment, treating a patient, and keeping them in the home. The thing that's keeping them there is that there's no reimbursement criteria that allows for EMS to be billed, uh, to bill for that service. EMS agencies, which are already stretched very thin in a large section of the country, a large portion of the country has EMS services that are not well funded, they're understaffed, they're part of the safety net program, so they're used for a variety of reasons. They're not able to charge for their services if they go into the home of a hospice patient or any other home health situation, provide care in the home, and then leave. Medicare Part B says they must transport that patient to a hospital. The Medicare hospice benefit says that EMS may take a patient out of the home and be paid for it, but they have to be taken to an inpatient hospice, hospice facility or taken home from an inpatient hospice facility. They can't provide treatment in the home and leave that patient. That's prohibitive for most services. There is an enormous opportunity right now to do pilot studies, to do further research in this topic, and to go forward and, and make a big difference at the policy level uh, for a huge number of people.